Um, so what I've got here is I've got a comp um, where I want to draw in uh, some kind of effect um, that's happening here. So for example, what that looks like is that looks a little something like uh, this. Let's make sure this is set up for all of this. Do, 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 do. On reveal. Okay, great. So now what I should be able to see is I should see that layer reveal itself and draw in, which it's not doing for some reason, of course. Um, that would be too easy. Oh, right, because I've missed a button. My whole life is missing buttons. All right, so now the effect that uh, is generated is that this thing draws itself in uh, over time. This is a simple After Effects trick to come up with. Um, and now that it's uh, buffered itself, we can see what that looks like. So we'll just back it up one more time, see what that looks like. Blah, 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 blah. Great, wonderful. All right, so the um, this is for Sparrow Song, and what we're seeing here is actually a comp uh, that was originally created in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, what I did uh, actually in the space with a projector on was at full uh, full resolution for the projectors. I created a uh, Photoshop composition where um, I mapped onto the surface the kind of light painting, uh, light effect that I wanted to see. So in this case, what that looked like is I drew in all of these kind of building-like surfaces with a chalk pen um, to give it this kind of like child-drawn chalk kind of effect. So uh, here in After Effects, what I did is I went ahead and imported that. So you do a little double click here, I grab the file that I wanted, I hit open, and then uh, the important step to remember here is that instead of merge layers into footage, what I wanted to do was editable, editable layer styles, and I wanted to pull this in as a composition and retain the layer sizes, and the reason that's important is that it gives me two things. First, it gives me uh, either all of these individual pieces um, as their own uh, layers that I can pull from, or it gives me this comp, this one unified comp with all of those layers stacked on it. So this preserves all the layer structuring that I did inside of uh, Photoshop, which makes it just a ton easier to isolate the kind of animation that I want here in After Effects. Okay, so that's the kind of nuts and bolts of at least getting the file prepped and getting it in here. So how do I create this effect then? How do I make the building draw itself in? Uh, so to do that, what I'm going to do is let's uh, move to another building here. Uh, one of the other things I want to make sure that I cover is how I get this color business to change too. So I'm going to find the next building that I want to work on, which is this big tall one. Uh, great building four here. Let's make sure that I've got that layer selected. Great. Um, and so the first thing to look for is this change to color effect. So I'm going to pull that guy onto this comp. Um, and let's deal with that one first. So the way this particular... Uh, effect works is that I have my from color, this is the starting point, and then I have my destination color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a destination color here that's a little bit yellow. One of the conversations we had, I had with Dan, um, was they wanted primary colors, so I'm trying to stick to blue, red, yellow um, for any color that I put into this. I'm going to hit OK. Now I can see that nothing's changed, so it looks as though I haven't actually done anything, which is a lie. Um, to actually make sure that I can see this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. Instead of hue, I want hue, lightness, and saturation. Bang. And I'm going to say transforming to color. Um, either of these, neither of these matter in terms of which one's selected in this particular manifestation of how this works. So that's how I've changed the color. And I, you know, of course could uh, come in here and change this to a different color. Um, see here, like, I don't know, red maybe. I force it to preview. Well, for crying out loud. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. Um, but again, I want to stick with this kind of bright yellowy kind of color. There we go. All right. So now I've got the color of my building changed. Now I actually want to draw the building in, right? So I want to have this kind of like slow reveal effect. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the stroke effect. And it's under the kind of larger category of generate. So I'm going to grab stroke here. I'm going to add stroke here to building number four. Perfect. And that gives me this little business right here. 
And this is where it gets super squirrely. So the first thing that I'm going to do here that will help me understand what's going on is I'm going to uh, add in my keyframes for generating the effect. So in this case, I want to start at the, um, I want to progress to the end of the stroke. So I'm going to start at the, uh, where the uh, stroke starts. And so in this case, I'm going to turn on my keyframes here. I want that, that to be zero, so 0% zero there. I'm going to go forward some chunk of keyframes, and I'm going to make sure that now I'm at 100%. So this means that I'll start at um, the very first place on my pencil drawing, or ink drawing, or whatever, and it will progress towards the end, and the end is 100%. Excuse me. So that's the way that works. It's uh, not intuitive, but that's, that's what it's going to be. All right, brush hardness. I want to make sure this is turned up to 100%. That's going to be really important to make sure that I've gone ahead and done that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and create the paths for all of this. So I'm using uh, a Wacom tablet. This is, I suppose, just as easy to do with a mouse. Um, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. That's the way so many of these things work. So to get this puppy started, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that I have the right layer selected. So I'm actually on the right thing here. I'm going to go hit U once. U is going to review the keyframes that have been changed. I can use that to hide them too. So I know that wherever my position is here, I'll be 100% drawn in. I'm not going to see that because of the way this is set up right now. What I should see is I should only see vector paths um, that give me an indication of what's happening. Uh, so I'll get positioned here. I'm going to hit G on the keyboard uh, to turn on the pen tool, which is different from Illustrator and Photoshop. Thank you very much, Adobe. You make my life miserable sometimes. And so now I'm going to start by just coming in here and adding uh, points for this drawing. And the reason that I'm making them so close together is that um, this will give me a little bit more control in terms of figuring out how to make this path reveal only the parts of this um, image that I want it to. Because uh, if I'm a little too clumsy, then I'll reveal too much at once. One of the interesting things about this is that I'm not going to close this path, so I'm not going to actually turn this into a mask. I'm just going to leave this as a kind of unended path. Um, and there are a couple of different options for what this looks like. I could have all of my individual pe uh, pieces draw in at once. Or what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have them draw in sequentially. So in terms of thinking about how I want these to draw in sequentially, what's going to happen is it's going to draw in the outside of this building first. And I think what I want it to do, um, because it's going to be hard to isolate this crisscross kind of thing, is I'm just going to do a kind of zigzag pattern um, all across the building that's going to generate a kind of wipe down. And so to do that, I'm going to, be, I'm going to go here, here. Let's undo that. And let's make this a little bit tighter. So I have to make this a little bit tighter to actually get the effect that I want. Now, one of the ways that I could make this a little bit easier to figure out whether or not if I'm actually covering the territory that I want is over here in my effects thing, I could go ahead and turn on masks already. Um, and then I can turn up my brush size. In this case, I'm going to turn up my brush size to six. So this is actually giving me an opportunity to see how my path is getting drawn in. Mm. Let's see if five is thick enough. Five's not quite thick enough. I guess I need to stay at six. This gives me an opportunity to see how this is getting drawn in and what area is being covered. Six, where is my last path? There we go. Um, and there's a little bit of delay here catching up with that, but that's all right. We can also see where the edge of this particular layer is. Uh, which is, you know, can be handy or not handy, I suppose. Uh, let it catch up here. Good. Let me make sure I'm getting some nice solid coverage. Now, because all of these other pieces are their own layers, I'm not going to worry about this crossing over on top of other buildings. Now, if this was just one single layer, I might worry about um, ending up in a position where the uh, what I was drawing on was revealing parts of the image that I didn't want it to. And so um, because of my the precautions that I've taken prior to this, I'm in the clear right now. But that's certainly something to be wary of. 
Uh, so this particular kind of effect could be used for a Photoshop comp, it can be used for something that comes from Illustrator, it can be used uh, just on an image itself. Um, what's interesting about this is that this stroke generation tool doesn't give me a lot of fine tune control over the kind of brush that's drawing it in. It gets, just gives me this kind of blunt control of this wide path. Um, so that's just, again, something to bear in mind. Now, if I had drawn the strokes in, uh, what do you call it, in Photoshop, um, with some kind of particular brush stroke effect, then the reveal would look like it was uh, painting in that particular brush stroke. Um, and in my case, what's happening is that I'm just getting this kind of slow reveal. Now, it doesn't look like a reveal right now because that's got, I've got one other button that I've got to push when I'm all done with this back and forth, hither and dithering. Good. Oh my goodness, I picked the wrong building to demonstrate this particular effect with. But I think it will turn out nicely. All right, let's see if that's all the coverage that I want. Yes, all right, great, wonderful. So now I'm going to make sure they do not close the path. Don't want to close the path at all here. I'm going to put away my pen here for just one second. And now here over in the effects tab over my um, control dialog, what I want to do is I'm going to um, make sure that this little paint style uh, puppy is switched to reveal original image. So now what's happening is that these brush strokes are going to paint in that building. And what I've got it set to right here, where'd it go, is it's going to do this sequentially. So it's going to do the outside of the building first, and then it's going to do the inside of the building starting from the top and working its way down. Now this is going to happen relatively quickly. It looks like it's going to happen over the span of like two seconds or one second and 15 frames, I think, is the distance of these markers. So this is going to happen too fast, but this will at least give us a sense of what this is going to look like. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's that's too gross. Um, so let's back up here. Let's preview that again. Mm, yeah, so what I do is I come in here and adjust my keyframes. I think that can take a little bit longer because I'm going to let that one kind of color itself in as other pieces come in. Yeah, look at that. So now it's got this kind of like zh -zh 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 wiping kind of effect that's coming all the way down the building, and that's going to happen uh, while some of these other structures draw themselves in. Anyway, that's the quick and dirty for how to get um, not only the color change of a white asset or a white layer in your comp, but also to figure out how to actually draw all of this business in. All right. Till next time.